Welcome to KetoMealsAndRecipes.com. To celebrate and to thank my amazing 50,000 subscribers, wow, what a milestone. I can't thank you enough for helping me achieve this. I'm going to show you how to make my keto, sugar-free, gluten-free version of a Swedish almond cake. Some of you may recognize it as an IKEA cake, but I guarantee you this cake is much better. My family and all of our friends that have had a taste of this cake absolutely rave about it. And in fact, it's such a favorite for my family that this year alone, it was requested for Valentine's Day, Easter, and of all the cakes my husband had a choice of, he chose this one for his birthday this past April. Some of you might have seen or even enjoyed a slice of this cake in the IKEA food court or bought it from their frozen food section. They call it the almondy cake, but I assure you this version is much better because I based it on an authentic Swedish recipe and made it in the Swedish style. If you look at it, it is a thin layered cake, not a big fluffy cake. Before getting started, I really want to assure you that this is actually a quite an easy cake to make. As with all my cooking tutorials, just follow my step-by-step -step directions and note the suggestions I will share with you. By watching my video as you make the recipe, I'm absolutely sure that you too will be able to make this cake and make it perfectly. And with this Swedish almond cake, impress your family and friends. Just keep it a secret and don't let them know how easy it was to make. The Swedish almond cake has a macronutrient ratio of 5.3 to 1 with 4.1 grams of total carbs, 1.8 grams of dietary fiber, resulting in 2.3 grams of net carbs per slice of cake. Before starting to make the Swedish almond cake, preheat your oven to 250 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius. I would also suggest that you line the bottom of two 8 inch or 20 centimeter springform pans or alternatively you could use a flan pan. It would be a good choice too. Whichever type of pan you use just line the bottom with parchment and then also grease the inside of the pan and then set it aside. The first thing we're going to do is make the cake layers. Begin by separating your room temperature eggs. I would recommend that you Crack each egg in a separate bowl just to make sure you don't get any yolks in the whites. And after you've cracked each egg, transfer the whites into the stand mixer bowl. And you can put the egg yolks into your saucepan right away. The first thing I do is I whip the egg whites on high speed until I notice that all the whites have been consumed and it's a light frothy stage. Then, at that point, slowly pour in the combined finely ground sweetener and salt, and then continue whipping to the light peak stage. Then reduce the mixer speed to low, or if it's easier for you, turn it off before adding the almond flour. It's time to add about one third of the almond flour into the whipped egg whites, and using a spatula, fold everything together, or continue whisking on low speed until well combined, then repeat by adding the second third of the almond flour, whip to combine, and repeat with the last third of the almond flour. This is all there is to making the cake batter. It's kind of like a meringue cake. See, I told you it was quite easy. Now it's time to divide the batter equally and pour half of the batter into each of the prepared pans. And using your offset spatula, just spread out and distribute the meringue cake mixture so that it's a nice even layer and as smooth as you can make it. And repeat with the second batch in the second pan as well. Place the pans in the middle position of your preheated oven and bake for 25 minutes. At which point remove these two cake layers from the oven and let them rest for five minutes in the pan. Carefully take them out of the pan Peel off the parchment and place them on a wire cooling rack and let the cake rest for a couple hours or so until it gets to room temperature. While the cake is cooling, it's time to make the custard filling. You have already put the egg yolks into the saucepan, now just add the sweetener. I always pre-grind my sweetener because I find it blends better. Then pour in your vanilla and almond extract and just whisk the egg yolks until they are pale yellow stage and the volume has increased slightly. 
The next step is to slowly pour in the cream as you continue whisking continuously. Now let's put the saucepan onto the stove top and it's time to cook the custard over low heat. As this custard is cooking, you have to stir continuously. Don't leave and do something else. And keep cooking until your custard has thickened and can coat the back of a spoon. It took my custard about seven minutes to thicken up like this. And now it's time to add the butter into a clean bowl and continue whipping to a pale yellow stage. Then pour the cooled custard into the whipped butter and with your hand mixer whip everything until it's very creamy and velvety. Having done that, leave the bowl with the finished custard on the counter. Don't be tempted to put the custard into the refrigerator so that it cools faster. It's almost time to do the cake assembly. So the last prep step you have to do is to first dry roast the almond slices over medium low heat until the slices are a pale golden yellow. Once you notice that your almonds are starting to turn color, immediately transfer them into a cool plate. This will prevent your almond slices from getting too brown or burning, which they do very quickly. These dry roasted almond slices really smell amazing. But don't eat any because you will need them for your cake. Now that both the cake layer and my custard are at room temperature, it's time to assemble the cake. First, place one of the two cake layers onto a serving platter. But to keep your serving platter clean, take a couple strips of parchment and tuck them under the cake. Ladle about 40% or a little less than half of your custard, placing it in the center of the cake. I like to use an offset spatula to spread out the custard, beginning at the center and working towards the outside. And make this layer as even as you can so that your second layer will sit properly. It's time to get the second cake layer and place it on top of the custard. Transfer the rest of the custard into the center of the cake and spread towards the outside as we did with the center layer. This time, however, you want to let enough of the custard drizzle down the sides of the cake so that it can coat the sides as well. And then take a little bit of care and then just use your spatula to smooth the sides. One thing I'd like to mention is when you're spreading the custard on the sides, make sure there's a thick enough base of custard so that when you put the almonds on, they'll stick to it. Now for the last part. I have found the best way to coat the cake with the dry roasted almond slices is to place my almonds onto the cake by hand. Doing it by hand will give you the best control and you'll be able to distribute the almonds in a well distributed single layer. I have found putting the almonds to the side of the cake a bit trickier. So I usually just place them one at a time or in small batches as I go around the cake. Although there are a few steps, I think that you'll agree with me, this is not a hard cake to make. It just takes a little bit of patience and care, as most cooking from scratch does. After you've completed putting all the almond slices onto your cake, gently lift up the cake and pull out the parchment paper. Refrigerate the cake for about 30 to 60 minutes. That's because the cake needs a bit of time to set and firm up before you cut it. If you're wondering how to get 12 slices, just cut the cake in half and then each half into thirds and each third into half. The slices may seem small, but this is a very, very rich cake and you don't want a big thick slice. This cake has the most amazing mouthfeel. The texture of the meringue cake layer, the creaminess of the custard, combined with the crunchiness of the dry roasted almonds, it's a taste explosion in your mouth. When you make the cake, please let me know what your thoughts are. Now it's time to serve and enjoy a slice of cake. Thank you so very much for watching my Swedish almond cake video. And if you like my recipes and find them useful, I would be honored if you would subscribe. Recommend this channel to a friend by sharing this recipe. And most importantly, turn on the notification bell and scroll down to all. And do leave me a comment. I absolutely love corresponding. And as you notice, I respond to everyone. Please come back when I post my next video. Until then, have an absolutely wonderful day. Cheers.